given this problem, number 32, and what's unique about it, or it's not what's unique about it, you should start noticing this pattern with these problems, is that it has these three major parts. Diagram, a written uh, question portion, and an answer, and the answer is in sort of an, uh, an equation or an expression. In this case right here, we have these four equations. So, I can pick up information just by looking at the visual diagram. I can pick up information breaking down the written question and pulling out all the language details that are in, this que in the description and the question portion. And I can also get a lot of clues from the answer choices. Now let's start in our scan. We have these, these, four, these three major parts, right? Let's start and let's just analyze them because this is how you have to study. You have to study by breaking down the parts and then we put it back together. It's one way to study. Well, let's say I had to do with, I looked at the third section first, A, and then I see these things here. Well, I might think A involves area. I don't know, I'm just saying, usually, you know, A could involve area, I'm just saying it might involve area. C, I'm not so sure what C stands for, but I have a good feeling that R represents a radius, and I know the radius of a circle is that line that goes from the center to an outer edge. C, what could C be? Maybe C involves, maybe C involves the circumference of a circle. If we're talking about the circumference of the circle, then I could say, hey, wait a second, that's the distance around a circle is equal to the circumference, which is equal to 2 pi R. Oh, maybe A involves the area. It could be, I don't know, and that would be this portion right here. So if I was thinking about area, I'd be thinking, hey, that's, that's the full area of the, the shape itself. And Oh, and I know the formula for that. I remember that is uh, pi r squared. Okay, guess what? Uh, right now, I'm just free associating, looking at this piece, pulling out information. I was able to pull out, it may have to do with the area of the circle, pi r squared, it may have to do with the circumference of a circle, 2 pi r, and that r represents the radius. Okay, now let's look at the first picture. Well, I see that circle. So if I was thinking about the circumference, it would be that distance around the circle. And what is that? Again, I'm reviewing in my head. Distance around a circle is pi r, 2 pi r. Okay, or maybe it has to do with the stuff inside the circle. That's the area of the circle. What's the formula for the area of the circle? This is where you're reviewing. What's the area of the formula? What's the area formula for a circle? Well, that's uh, pi r squared. And what's this? I have no clue. It looks like a box. Well, what's a box? Length times width. All right. Now I go to this third section. This third section requires me to read over and pick up details as I read. So first I'm going to read it. The diagram above is used to describe the relationship between the circumference C, the radius R, and the area A of a circle. Assuming that the circle is divided into enough sections so that the figure on the right approximates a rectangle, oh, okay, so I was accurate in thinking this could be a rectangle, which of the following relationships is demonstrated? Now, I approach this because I'm a little stronger in the visual and in sort of the mathematical way of thinking. Those are my two strengths, so I started there and that helped and that helped me sort of make sense of this. Now you may be, I don't know where you are, maybe you're like, Chris, I'm still lost. So let's break it down. You have to decide on which area, which strengths you have and what area you want to work on and then I think you can have a lot more success. If I did start with the reading portion, I should have highlighted in my brain circumference Okay, I know the radius, how the radius is involved in the circumference, and the area, all the circle. So I should know that I'm going to be thinking about the area of the circle, and I'm also going to have to know the circumference of a circle. And I believe it's saying that, assuming the circle is divided in enough sections, um, so and the figure on the right approximates a rectangle. So what that's saying is this is this is essentially a rectangle like that. Which of the following, um, following relationships is demonstrated? Okay. 
Well, the area of a, if I was dealing with just the area of a circle, the area of the circle, the formula for that, I know that. The, not the distance around, but the area of this circle. So I'm going to, the area portion of this circle, that I use pi r squared. I know that. So that's the area, pi r squared. Now, that approximate, that, that, that's an approximation of the area of this. What is that area made up of? Well, isn't, you know, this had a, you know, that had that line there, but isn't that like this, let me go back, that's not a good color to, to choose. Isn't this line here approximately the height? I think that's, I think that's fair to say. So we go back. Oops, if we go back now, this measurement here is, is approximately that measurement there. So that's the radius. Now what's, what's this portion here equal to? Well, isn't this whole thing that made up of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6? And isn't that the equivalent of this right here, isn't that the circumference? But we're only looking for, we're only looking for half of it, right? Because we're only going to be looking at, because the formula for a rectangle is length times width, and we already got, we already got that the length is r, the radius. So what's the width? Well, the width is equal to half the circumference, or three bumps. One, two, three. So what is the, how would I do that? Well, I would take whatever the circumference is and multiply it by a half. That would give me this measurement here, which is the same as this measurement here. So that would be, this is equal to half the circumference. Okay, so where am I going? Length times width of that rectangle is equal to length, which is a radius, times the width, which is equal to half the circumference. So what would that get me? Well, that would get me something that looked like this. One half, whatever the circumference is, times the radius, is equal to the area of this circle, which is pi r squared. Oops. And since that pi r squared is equal to, to uh, the area of a circle, I'm going to represent it as a. Now I'm saying that the area of that circle is equal to this measurement here, half the circumference, or three, three bumps, times the length, which is the radius. Then I get you this one right here. Okay, team. It's hard for me to gauge if that was helpful or if that was tragically harmful. I'm hoping, on the one hand, that it was helpful. And at the very least, it helped you break down this problem into its three parts. The diagram portion, the, written, por the uh, written portion, the language portion, and the mathematical, you know, equation and expression portion. Right now they're just written as it, um, equations. Hopefully it did. And I'm hoping that, you know, the review of the formulas for the circumference of a circle and the area of a circle also was helpful. Now, that last piece, you're going to have to go back and you're going to have to use those formulas and you're going to have to work through, you know, how these two pieces are equivalent and how you could get to that answer faster because that means if you're breaking down at this step right here it means you fully haven't grasped this formula and you fully haven't grasped how to manipulate this formula to make sure that these are equal so I would go back and I would use these diagrams and uh, rework what I did okay team I hope you found this helpful uh, check out one of the MTEL Math workshops coming up, and uh, have a great day. Thank you.